Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of a Bessica 596. So starting the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. This is your main connection point, so if you are charging the vehicle at home or you had arrived at your site, first thing you'll want to do is hook the vehicle up. So to hook it up, you get your hooker blade, lift the collar, lift the flap on the van and hook the vehicle up. You can connect there. You've also got a little external TV point, so if you're struggling to get a signal, you can use a length of coax connector there and use their aerial on site. But to be fair, you've got a satellite system and a TV aerial on this model, you'll probably never use that. Here you have the fresh water drain off point. So drain off your water is very important, especially in the winter as you don't want the water to freeze or if you've taken on any contaminated source of water or you're simply not using the vehicle. So you'd open the tap, you then have to press the button inside the van as it's an electric motor on here for them to drain off. But make sure the tap's open for you then open the valve on the electric motor and it will drain off. To fill with water, this is your water filler. So using the key, which is a round headed key, you've got a lockable flap. And what you'll be able to do is go and buy yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Pop the flat end of the hose into there. You can either see on your control panel how much water you've got on board or you can wait until it simply overflows and you know you've got a full tank. Should you struggle to get a hose to the vehicle, and you, you can buy a wheel pump and there's a fitting behind here which is just a power fitting. So all you need to do is take this cover off two pins there which is 12 volt 12 volt pins into there flat end of the hose into there pump into the water and it'll suck the water out the bucket out the container into the vehicle if you can't get a hose to the van this is an external shower point so you'll get a bullfinch connection as long as the pump's on You'll be able to use your water to hose the dogs off, yourselves, the bikes, the boots, the kids. Obviously it is hot as well, but you'll have to have the way, the heating system, the Aldi heating system on for the water to be warm, otherwise it will just be cold. But make sure the pump's on as well to get a pressurized flow of water. Flatted headed key, swift key, allows you to open this locker here. And this is kind of like your wet locker. So it slides out, it's a draw. What I would do is I'd put your leveling ramps in there, all your wet gear, so your hookup leads, all of that in there. Stuff that you're not gonna have to trail in the van and it get dirty. Coming further along, you've got your cassette toilet. So I'll show you inside how to use the toilet, but this is how to empty the toilet. So lift the orange handle and slide the cassette out you then either carry it or you can pull out the hand held lever with the wheels on the back and you can drag it to the waste disposal point which is beside your toilet block and then empty you simply remove the grey cap press the button at the back and tip the content of the cassette out once you've tipped the content of the cassette out, there's normally a tap, so you put some water in here. Give it a rinse, tip out again, and then go in with a cap full of chemicals. So it can either be blue or it can be green. Ask your site what they prefer to use. Pop it in here, and then it's good to go back into the motorboat. Wastewater is here, so this is a grey one. So normally on the way out of your site, if you're not on a super site, which has got a drain off at the back of your pitch. You drive over the grid, press the button in the van and it will drain off your wastewater. So this is shower water, hand basin water and dishes water. Drain it off in the winter, make sure it's fully drained off because you leave no water in the motorhome because there is a chance it could freeze with the colder temperatures. And obviously don't drive around with wastewater where you don't have to because obviously it'll increase your payload and it'll increase the consumption of diesel because you've got more weight on board where you don't necessarily need the weight of the dirty water. So 
storage in the back there. We've got storage with anchoring points, rafter barn, awning, winding handle, which I'll show you on the day because it's slightly windy here. You don't want to get your awning out. High level brake light, twin lens reverse camera, which I'll show you inside. And then you do have a full bike rack. So pull the wheel down. These move depending on how big your bike is. And then these go through the spokes to tie the bike wheels down. They go on the crossbars, so last bike and first bike. And then all you need to do is pop a bike lock around the frame of the bikes and the bike rack just to stop your bike from being stolen should you leave it unattended. Tow bar on here as well with 13 pin electrics. Same storage in there. This is an external gas point. So again, bullfinch connection pops into there. You'll need some gas rubber hosing and some Jubilee clips to connect to your external barbecue, Kadak, awning heater. And what that'll save you doing is carrying a spare bottle. It'll use the bottle on board on the gas supply of the motorhome. Two fridge vents, awning light and your awning which we'll show you on the day of collection. Vent, this is your vent for your Aldi heating system. So your Aldi heating system is behind which I'll show you inside. Just make sure this is obstruction free when operating on gas. LPG locker, so gas locker, so you can open that up. And in here you can fit two big 13 kilogram bottles. This is our test bottle. So it's a six kilogram bottle. What you need to do is it's a left hand thread, so you'd hand tighten the pigtail first, and then you'll need to use a gas spanner or an adjustable wrench to tighten up the, the final few turns on the pigtail. Once you've got it on, by all means you can turn the cylinder on, press the black button, allows the gas through the crush valve into here, and then you press this button here, which will allow the, the gas through the regulator into the motorhome. Tie your bottles in with the straps provided and turn the cylinder off before you start driving. It's far safer to have a gas bottle turned off than a bottle on when you're driving. At the door, you do have your diesel, which is the passenger door, which opens with the main Decato key. Tire pressures, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI all round, front and back. Toolkit is underneath the passenger seat, which includes a tonai, jack and a brace, and a screwdriver, all in there. Underneath this compartment in the cab floor, if you lift that up, you get access to your engine battery. It's not underneath the bonnet, it's underneath the cab floor. So should you ever need to change it, or you ever need to charge it, just lift this cover off. And your bonnet release is here. So if we have a quick look underneath your bonnet. You've got all your fluids to the left. So the main one you're gonna need, which is your screen wash, which is this one here. Three tabs and you get access to your first one, which is your power steering fluid, and then your coolant. Brake fluid, oil and dipstick for checking your levels. Then your pain code is on this sticker here, which is 632 Nero Black. Earth for giving or receiving a jump start as the battery's underneath the carb floor. And then between the air filter and the passenger headlight, if you put your key in here and lift this up, this rectangular box, that's the positive terminal just there for giving or receiving a jump start. Finally, as it's on the Alco chassis, this is your weight plate, so 4250 gross vehicle weight, six tons, so the motorhome, whatever you car, whatever your towing car, trailer, caravan behind it can't exceed six ton all in then you've got your front and back axle weights so to operate your swift control panel in the bottom right hand corner you do have your master switch so this turns the vehicle on and off 12 volt if you're not hooked up or if you are hooked up you'll get mains 230 volt and you'll get a little line here just by the time which shows that 
there is mains power and the leisure battery is charging. You can go up and down here so you can view the level of your leisure battery. Just here. Your vehicle battery. The current amperage from the solar panel which is going to your leisure battery. But please note that when you are hooked up, the solar panel does go to sleep because 230 volt has a lot more charge in it than the solar panel could ever give the vehicle. And then you view the internal temperature. And you can go into your heater settings, your system settings by clicking the middle one and then you're back at the start with your Sergeant EC620 unit. Across from it, you've got your light, so you've got your owner light, which is the light on the outside of the vehicle. Your dimmer light, so just press and hold, and you can dim these down and turn them on and off. So that's a light switch, that's a light switch, and they all are individually switched around the vehicle. These are kind of like master switches for your lights. And then at the bottom, you do have your pump, so making sure that you do have enough water on board, you can turn it you pump on to pressurise the water to your taps, toilet and shower. Here you have your electric dump valves for your fresh water and your waste water. So all you need to do is turn the switch down and that will allow the motor to release the valve in the tank and allow the water to drain off outside the vehicle. So you do have designated fresh water and waste water pipes on the side of the vehicle. With the waste, you'll have to drive over the grid on the way out of your site. Press the waste and that'll drain off your water, unless you're on a super site where you can hook up to the back of your site and leave it open. And then you're fresh. Obviously you want to drain that down in the winter. When you winterize in the vehicle, as well as the waste, make sure no water's left in the vehicle so nothing can freeze. When you're not using it for a couple of weeks, there's no real reason why you should leave the waste, the fresh water in the van. Just let it out and all you need to do is open the valve like so. You'll hear the motor kick in and it'll start to drain out underneath the vehicle. To operate the Aldi heating system, so you can turn the heater off and on via the left hand switch. And then hit the right hand switch which says menu. And here you do have the temperature at the top, which is the temperature that you want the motorhome to be inside. So you can have it all the way to 30 degrees or all the way down to off, depending how hot you want the vehicle. And then underneath, you've got a picture of a shower head, and this is your water. So this bar goes up in two sections, so when it's completely empty and it's not filled, this one here, that means the hot water is not on. Press plus and it will go to half a bar, which means that your hot water is on and your heating is on, should you have your heating set. If you went all the way to a solid black bar, the hot water now has the priority, so it will turn off your heating and prioritise heating the water first. But you don't really need to do this unless you're in desperate need of water, so you normally just have it on half and allow the vehicle to heat and the water. And then electric sign, so the electric's off at the minute, so if you're on a site you would use the electric, don't waste your gas. So you've got 1 kilowatt, which is 750 watts. 2 kilowatts, which is 1500 watts, or 3 kilowatts. So it all depends on the amperage the site gives you, it will determine whether you use 1, 2, or 3 kilowatts. Because sometimes it can be too much of a draw off the vehicle and trip either the vehicle or the site. So you may just have to use 2 kilowatts on your bigger sites, unless they've told you otherwise. And then on smaller CL sites, you may have to just use 1 kilowatt. Then, should you just be going well camping and you haven't got any electric source, you'd use gas, which is the bottom one here. Just making sure that your gas bottle's turned on, it would use gas to heat the water and the vehicle. But you can use the gas and electric together, should you be in desperate need of either hot water 
or you're away in the winter and you not, don't want to sit in a cold motorhome, you can put both on together and that will reduce the time it takes to heat the vehicle to around five to seven minutes. You would turn off your gas and allow the electric to continue to heat the motorhome. So in the kitchen, you've got your cooker hood, which needs to be all the way back because there's a sensor in this and if it's not all the way back, you'll not be able to get your hobs to light. And you've got three gas, one electric. The electric is this side here and it illuminates with the red light here and that's only on mains 230 volt. Otherwise, you will just have to use your gas. And you do have three lit gas rings. Once you've had any of the hot plates on, including the electric one, allow it to cool down. So it's cool enough to put the cooker hood down. Otherwise, there is a chance you could shatter the glass. Put your grill. And you do have your oven there, so it's lit at the back. Just under this plate, you can see there, it's blue, which means that the flame's on. And that is your oven. You've got your plug to isolate the electric hot plate, should it be giving you any issues. There's a plug in there, so you just need to unplug it. You've got a microwave oven, which is an 800 watt microwave. And the plug for it is in there. So any problems with the microwave or should you ever have to replace it in the future, you can obviously just go and buy a normal household microwave. It's an 800 watt one, and then you can just plug it in. Cups and plate racks. Large storage drawer with the cutlery tray in. Push the catches in to keep the doors locked when traveling. And then you do have storage in here and in the bottom of the kitchen this is the location of your boiler so that's your true that's your Aldi boiler should I say so your Aldi boiler does two jobs heats the water heats the vehicle it's more like a central radiator system as it's got pipes and fins here which act as radiators and obviously antifreeze runs through the system so there's no chance that the antifreeze is going to freeze in the winter but there's water in there so there's 10 litres can be held in the boiler at any one time in the winter you want to drain off the water when the vehicle's not in use because we are we do experience colder temperatures in the winter and you don't want the water to freeze. So located just down to the left hand side of the boiler you've got this little yellow toggle. It's currently lying down in this position which means it can hold water. You want to stand it up on end like that and the 10 litres of water will drain directly out underneath the van. You leave it stood up on end during the time that you're not using the motorhome. You would then open all the taps within the van so kitchen shower hand basin make sure that your fresh and your waste are drained off outside and then when you come to reuse it obviously you want to shut your fresh and your waste you want to shut your boiler you want to shut all your taps inside the van and you want to get a hose pipe and you want to fill the vehicle with water once you've filled the vehicle with water you would then come in and you can put your control panel on and you can turn your pump on. You can go to the cold side of the tap first. You'll get a pressurised cold water feed straight away. Once you start going round to the hot side, it'll cough splutter because what it's doing is it's drawing it from the tank that's underneath the floor and it's bringing the cold water into the Aldi boiler until the boiler is then full you'll then get it through the tap as a pressurized flow of water but remember drain your boilers off because if you don't 
it's not covered under your warranty and it's very expensive to replace or repair one of these so all you need to do is stand this up on end like that located next to it as well you do have gas taps so you've got three gas taps and it tells you on the front of this cover what they are so we do have a red one a, a blue one and a green one so your red one is for your boiler your water heater your green one is for your hob grill and oven and your blue one is for your fridge so they isolate each appliance any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced so to operate your Dometic fridge so you've got a button in the far left which if you press and hold you can turn the fridge off and you can turn it back on and then it's a three-way fridge so it's 12 volt of the engine battery when the engine's running to keep the temperature the same if you're driving from a site to a site or you've pre-chilled it at home and you're driving from home to a site you can use the battery to keep the shop in nice and fresh acts as a big cool box you've got gas if you're wild camping and you've got mains 230 volt which lacked as a household fridge so or you've got automatic and what auto does is auto picks out the best source you have available at any one time so at the minute obviously the engine's not running so it can't pick out 12 volt there's a gas bottle on and we're hooked up it knows not to waste the gas so it's went to hook up and the picture of the plug is illuminated with the little light underneath it which means it's running on 230 volt if i was to take that out now it would switch directly over to gas as soon as i unhook it or if i was to start the engine it would go to battery so automatic does it all for you you don't really need to have to change anything but it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas if you've knocked the engine off and your gas is open and you're not hooked up what it'll do is that's just let me know that the door's open what it'll do is it will wait 20 minutes and not light in case you've pulled in for diesel the last thing you want is the fridge lighting at a petrol station or you can knock it off auto completely by pressing this button here and as you can see there i've put on a battery and it's failed because there's no engine on i've put on a gas and it's put on the gas there on the battery on to hook up or you can just leave it on the auto and it'll do its own thing that's just lighting up because the door's open so it's letting us know that the door is open and then here you do have your temperature so what i would do is if you're lucky enough to keep this at home a couple of days before you'll want to hook the van up and charge it not only does it allow your leisure batteries to charge but you can put your fridge on and you can allow your fridge to cool on full temperature and then the day before you go away put your shopping in allow that to chill overnight and as soon as you put your shopping in just drop it down to from five dots max on the temperature to about three or four because sometimes it can freeze your shopping put your shopping in allow that to chill overnight and then if it's on automatic start the engine unhook the van off you go it's on 12 volt it'll keep it nice and fresh until you arrive back on your site and you either hook back up and it goes back on to 230 volt or you want to go on to gas and all you need to do is just move it over because obviously it'll only work after 20 minutes on gas so we'll move it over for the first 20 minutes then you can pop it back on automatic and it'll keep your shop nice and chilled on gas should you be well coming last thing with the fridge is what you want to do is once you've finished using it or you've parked it up for a couple of weeks don't shut the door because if you shut the door there's a rubber on there it forms an airtight seal that air is now getting trapped in the fridge and it'll make your motorhome smell so on here what you can do is you can slide this forward and then just rest the door upon it just like that so just don't shut the door fully and allow air circulation in and out of the fridge to stop smells, mould and bacteria growing in your fridge. Above your fridge, 
This vehicle has been fitted with a solar panel from the factory. So at the back you've got your solar panel which is just flashing away there. Leave it doing its job, it means it's charging your leisure battery. Obviously a, a solid green light means it's charged. A flashing green light means it's charging. And that's good because it's flashing, it's charging your batteries up. And then the last customer has fitted an Oyster satellite system. So to erect the satellite, what you need to do is press this button here, which is the one that looks like the dish. It'll say activate. Press the tick. It'll say open. You'll hear it going up on the roof, whizzing around. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna whiz around until it finds Astro 2. Um, and the, go at the last position, which is Astro 2, and you can get Astro 2 all throughout the UK, France, and then when you go to Spain, you will have to change it, and to change it, you just press these buttons here and then tick the one you want, but there's loads of apps that help you find the best satellite on your phones and things, so just use that. But if you're only using it in this country, then you don't really need to bother. Astro 2 is what you want. It'll do an auto search until it locks on. Once it locks on, you'll know It's just making final adjustments there. Mm. And there you are, it's locked on Astro 2. So now all you need to do is turn your telly on and you've got satellite locked on. And there is your TV working. Should you need to retune it, so on your source, you're on satellite TV which means the satellite's on. Should you need to change it, you can press TV setup. Go down. Obviously Astra 2, should you go abroad, you will have to change the receiver on the telly to the one that you've got it locked on on the satellite. So Hotbird, Astro 1, all the others. And then should you need to retune it, all you need to do is press search. And it'll do an auto search and it'll find as many channels as it can where you're located, but you shouldn't really need to retune the satellite because the satellite should pick up as many channels as it can as it's better than a TV aerial. So to make the U-shaped lounge at the back into a double bed, what you need to do is lift them up, slide them out, and drop the leg for support in the middle. You can pop your backrests at the front or at the back, it's entirely up to yourselves. But what I would be doing is I would be turning the cushions upside down to the flatter side to sleep on. And then do the same this side. And there you have a double bed across the width of the vehicle. You can take the round corner panels out the back so it gives you a longer width from here to the back it's entirely up to yourselves but that does create your double bed so in your washroom you do have a separate shower cubicle but remember before you travel just put the turnbuckle on the top of the shower screens there to stop them from moving shower head so when you winterize, if you just unscrew the shower head from the hose, lie the hose in the tray, and then like I was saying when I was showing you how to winterize with the boiler, leave all your mixer taps open. So open this tap, open your hand basin tap. This is obviously this is showing that your hot water system is working. So that is hot water there and cold. So that's working fine. Toiletry cabinet, the little shelf there with the backlit light, so the light switch is just underneath there for your washroom. Towel rail, toilet roll holder, and you've got some more storage underneath. 
And then to operate the toilet, the blue button at the back is your fresh water flush. So remember to put the pump on. Flush the toilet first. So always put a bit of water in the toilet before you use it. Because it helps keep the seal lubricated between the blade seal around the top of the toilet and the cassette blade seal. So now you want to open the blade before you, you go any further and use the toilet. So this grey lever here, slide it away from you. It's now opened the hatch, which is the blade, and you can see directly into the toilet. You can now use the toilet. Give it a good flush after use and then you want to go around and close the blade which is slide it towards you to the left. If you've bought the aqua pink and the aqua chem blue in a twin pack obviously it doesn't take the pink but what you can do is put it in a spray bottle put about so much pink to a full bottle of water spray the bowl then flush and what that will do is it will clean your toilet bowl and it will give a fragrant smell in the washroom and do the same job and then when the cassette is full it will indicate under here underneath the diagram that it's full and ready to be changed but remember do it in that routine and then when it is full the cassette will come straight out the side of the motorhome if the blade was open the mechanisms engaged the cassette won't come out in your front double dinette this is how the bed would be made so using the backrest infill cushions which can be found in the wardrobes you've got one infill cushion there one there obviously the base cushion from this seat the backrest from underneath here that rests upon the table so if we take it apart we'll show you how it's made so this one just slides out like the back with the leg so you can't go wrong there so all that does is it slides out so the leg underneath slide that in that would go on there like so this one you use your table so your table physically slides in and sits on the two runner lugs that go down the seat so put your table in, then put your infill cushions on and slide this seat out and that's how you create your double dinette as it's two both sides belted seats so you've got four belted seats, double dinette, six, six berth, six belt vehicle using the table that's how you'd create your bed obviously when you're using the table, the table goes on the top bar there hold it to about 90 degrees, slide it in with the clips and drop the leg down so you do have a drop down double bed above the lounge so what you need to do is push it up push the button in this button here pull it down and you've got a double drop down bed so feet at the passenger side heads at the driver's side as it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom you've got some safety nets which go around the perimeter of the bed here on these lugs should you be putting children up there and clip on in the corners on these straps so there's two on the bulkhead, two on this one and then the ladder which can be found in the wardrobe clips on just here and gives you access up and down into the drop down bed so behind the passenger seat if you take the cushions off and lift your side bench seat you do have your charger which obviously charges your leisure battery when hooked up and your vehicle battery you've got your EC600 power supply unit so you've got all your trips so your main RCD and your MCBs for your various circuits within the vehicle so if you trip your vehicle out try here before you try your main site and it tells you there all your circuits and tells you there all your fuses for your 12 volt which I'll show you now so you do have all your 12 volt fuses standard blade fuses so it tells you on the sticker the rating and what fuse does what carry some spares with you if a fuse does blow you can replenish the fuse 
you've got your charger and your heating and hot water on electric obviously heating and hot water does work on gas but these need to be illuminated what I would do is just leave them if you've got any problems just make sure you haven't knocked these so just make sure that they're on because they'll only work when hooked up and obviously your charger charges your batteries you've got your leisure battery here main 50 amp battery circuit breaker which is on there so to fuse you may need to you may want to carry one of them not that it will go but you may just want to carry one just to be safe behind the passenger seat you've got this little rocker switch here which turns on a fan which blows hot air when the Aldi system's on into your cab so you can turn that on and off here and that's just a 12 volted assisted fan so it takes the chill off your cab by turning this switch on and off so this shows your rear view camera working obviously this is when in any forward gear or neutral if you pop the clutch down lift the collar and go into reverse it brings on the twin lens so you can see a bit of the top of the bike rack there and more of the back of the vehicle so you get two cameras one that looks further away and one that helps you when in reverse look at the back of the vehicle and that beeping behind us it just indicates that we're hooked up so don't drive away because the hookup's still in the vehicle